Welcome back guys and today we're going to continue looking at the differences between RAID, SHR, EXT4 and BTRFS. You've already seen me do a bunch of tests with regards to read, write, upload, deletion, creating archives and more. And now I'm going to talk about RAID rebuilds. What I've done is for those that caught my other videos you'll know that I was testing a RAID 0 with BTRFS. I've deleted that uh, complete storage area and left the two remaining storage areas. One is an, a RAID 1 with EXT4 file system and that's using two disks. And another one is a Synology Hybrid RAID SHR with BTRFS. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull one of the drives out. We're using SSDs. The only reason we're using SSDs was for the read write test earlier on to remove any bottlenecks. But for this test, what we're going to do is I'm going to pull one of the drives from this RAID build here, this RAID 1 EXT4. I'm going to pull one of these two drives, and then during the beeping and all the chaos that will ensue afterwards, I'm then going to introduce another drive, and we're going to see how long it takes for this device to rebuild that RAID. So, this is going to be a bit tough to time this today, guys, because I am going to have to move over to the NAS and remove a disk and navigate the options. So although I'm going to be timing this, it's worth highlighting that there is going to be a margin of error, and we will have to bear that in mind at the end of the test. But what I'm going to do is take a good look at the NAS dead with drive um, areas 1 and 2 being the initialized disks that aren't in a RAID, and I'm going to pull drive bay 4 out. Drive bay 4, as you can see here, is part of the RAID 1 EXT4 configuration. So I'm going to pull that drive now, and what this should do is then start freaking out, still letting me access the read and write speeds, but also it should alert me that the RAID needs to be rebuilt. So you've seen the read and write test before. If we go into the file manager, we can take a look at the RAID 1 with EXT4, and if you want, we can even do a very quick speed test of that one, because we've still got that mapped network drive here, and we can do a quick speed test over one gigabit ethernet, and as you can see, we've got 97 uh, megabytes per second. And again, remember, I am using screen recording software, so that does affect read and write speeds, and we're connected directly to the NAS over one GBE, so that's how we're getting those speeds there. During the RAID downtime, I am going to try to do a speed test of that exact same network drive to see if it makes any difference to performance. But let's get rid of that and make our way back to this screen. And within the RAID 1, I'm going to start now pulling these disk drives. Just the one, but I'm going to keep the storage manager open here on the other side. And I'm going to pull disk 4 out now. So disk 4 has now been removed. I can already hear a beeping in the background there it's that the RAID storage port has been degraded. It's saying the RAID is degraded. I'm going to leave that beeping in the background just a little bit. Hopefully that's not too annoying for you guys back home. Um, also, in theory, even though it's degraded, it should, maybe after a period of time, still remain network accessible. There's our RAID 1 with the XT4. And because we're using uh, this as a in this kind of RAID configuration, let's remove OBS for a second. If we do the AJA speed test again, we can see that performance has dipped ever so slightly. But because it's a RAID one, we're not going to see that big performance problem. Uh, we may see issues in the read because rather than reading off two disks, we're only reading off the one. But even though the RAID is falling apart and it's beeping to let us know that it's happened we can still access the data on that drive. We can still access files. We can still do read and writes. So from here is when we're going to conduct the speed test. So from here, I'm going to click start and I'm going to start adding a drive to this degraded RAID and we want to see how long it takes. So starting now. So going into here, we're going to go into actions. We're going to repair. We're only going to select drive one. I'm going to click next. We want to introduce this new drive to the RAID, and we're going to click Apply. That beeping is going to continue in the background rather annoyingly. And now the beeping has ceased. We can see CPU has gone up there, 
and resynchronization and repair has already started. And we'll leave this in the background to finish its repair. It should be relatively quick. I might have to fast forward quite a bit because this is still a RAID 1, but what it's doing right now, it's just creating a clone of the existing data on uh, the first disk in this RAID array and copying it over to the second. And what we'll do is we'll leave that and rather than record on screen, because I do think we're probably gonna have quite a delay on this because it will take quite a while for this to be finished, it might be serviceable to rely on the notification center and the log center going forward to tell us about when it's complete. We can already see that the error is completed and it started to rebuild that RAID if we full screen that. We can see it's starting to repair and it started to repair there at 1648. So as long as we come back into that log center, even if we don't monitor this screen, when we come back later on, that drive should be completed. Now, I could conduct both of the RAID rebuilds back to back, but I'm probably not gonna do that because the CPU is already at 97% utilization during the course of this rebuild. And it wouldn't be very fair to conduct that. But what I will do is for now, I'll, um, well, not OBS, that's the wrong one there, we can see that only two minutes has passed. The resynchronization has begun. Obviously, if I'd introduced the drive cold, then it would need to initialize. That does add another 60 to 90 seconds to this. But we're already at 3%. And with the log center on there and the time right now on screen, we should be able to extrapolate the completion time from this. So let's fast forward. Right, so we're almost at the point of conclusion here for the reparation of the RAID 1 with EXT4 file format. We're at 99.89 and it's taken so far about 50 minutes. It's resynchronizing. So that's pretty much the bulk of the main job. And now the RAID is done. We're going to click pause there, but it was 51 minutes and 20 seconds. So again, not too shabby it was 500 gig and it was an ssd so do bear that in mind if you if you do ever think about having to get your raid rebuilt and obviously not thinking about it if it's happened to you so let's see how the shr with btrfs fares against it so once again this is drive five and drive six so i'm just going to walk over and i'm going to disconnect another drive from this raid pool And the drive has been disconnected, so we should start hearing a beep anytime now. And there's the beep, the storage pool has degraded. And again, what we'll do there in the background, that's been performing a speed test the whole time we've been here. So if we click stop there, or click stop, there we can see all those readbacks that we were seeing earlier on, and the consistency of those. But if we switch now over, to the SHR with BTRFS, we'll double check and we're getting respectable speeds there. Do bear in mind once again that of course because this is a RAID 1, those read and write speeds aren't going to be too badly affected by a one drive of degradation because it's an identical amount of data on either drive. In a RAID 5 we would see very very different results. So let's repair our, our RAID. We'll click repair, we'll get the clock ready as well, we'll click next. We'll say that we'll add the drive to the RAID. We click apply, and now we're going to see how long it takes for this to repair. We're gonna click start now. And again, do remember there may be a slight margin of error, but we're gonna let that continue its parity consistency check there in the background. And of course, we will check the logs periodically just to see how things have changed. So we can look at all those results from earlier on and we can see just how long it took for the reparation to take place. System starts repair, 1648, and it was repaired then. There is our 51 uh, minutes, uh, 20 seconds. So now we're gonna let this carry on and we're gonna repeat exactly the same test to see how these two compare. So I'm just gonna fast forward, but already, I don't know if you guys have noticed, CPU utilization is lower. Previously, this thing was way high. We were in some dangerous red zone here, and now we're not looking at numbers so high. So that's already 
a moderately promising start. But let's fast forward to the completion of this RAID repair of an SHR two disc RAID configuration with BTRFS. Right, so I've come back to the desktop interface here of the SM and the RAID has been completed. But I've got to tell you, I've got bad news. I've come back and the clock is still running there and I've checked the logs and according to this it still took quite a while it completed its raid repair at 7:22 and right now it's 7:30 p.m. here so unfortunately that does make it drastically longer than that of it uh, than the raid 1 ext4 so unfortunately for those of you that were hoping the shr and that combined with BTRFS would mean that you'd have a quicker rebuild time. I'm sorry to tell you guys, it's not the case. And unfortunately, you are looking, at least in this case, it was at least 1 hour and 40 minutes, to say the least. So, that's something for you guys to bear in mind, perhaps when it comes to getting a rebuild on your RAID. And do remember that I did take advantage of SSD drives when performing this test. I will be doing a few more tests surrounding this particular Synology, but I think I'm going to wrap things up for now with regards to RAID rebuild times and RAID degradation. Hope you've enjoyed this series of videos. Don't forget to click like if you enjoyed this. Click subscribe if you want to learn more. And if you want more tailored notifications, click the bell to be notified about more suitable content for you. I'll see you guys on the next video.